this is really the story of me falling in love with these wines, the Sauvignon Blancs, the Cabernet Francs, the Chenin Blancs, the Muscadets, the red and white wines that you find in the Loire Valley of France. But I think beyond those wines, what I really fell in love with was the region itself and its people. What is up guys, this is Julian, the French winemaking guy who makes wine videos here on YouTube, yes, wine videos. Although we're not going to be talking only about wine today. Because yes, I've got something very important to tell you, you've understood it, I am in love. I was in the Loire Valley a couple of months ago and I literally fell in love with not only the wines, the fantastic wines that you can find there, but the whole region that's absolutely just stunning. There's so many wonders all around and also the people there. So this is the story how it all happened. Yes, I do live in France, but I do live in the very south where, the, where it's nice and sunny on the coast. And I don't get that many, not enough opportunities to go more north where there are some other fantastic wines as well. But I had the opportunity to spend four days in the Loire, going down the river and exploring its wine countries. And I definitely wanted to take you with me. Because yes, there are different wine countries in the Loire Valley. There are some red wine countries, there are some white wine countries, there are some sweet wine countries, and there are some sparkling wine countries. So I took that opportunity to take you with me and visit this area. And oh boy, was it all so worth it. We'll get back to the different styles. I just want to get you and start the journey. I'll explain things as we go. So let's do just that and let's go. Bonjour, morning of day one. I am about to start my four day tour of the Loire Valley. I just arrived last night in Sancerre in the upper Loire. It was all dark and foggy, so I couldn't really get a feel for the place. Now, what a surprise waking up this morning. I woke up in this hotel that is called the Panoramic, and you've guessed it, it's got a panoramic view of the vineyards of Sancerre. Look at what I woke up to this morning. I mean, the video possibly doesn't make it justice, but waking up to this panoramic landscape of vineyards just put me in the mood of visiting and learning more and tasting some wines. It's early in the morning, so I don't really feel like tasting some wines just right now, but dear, just do I feel like going out there and visiting those vineyards and learning more about the people that make wine here. What a way to wake up and straight in being feeling like I am in the heart of the French wine culture, on the heart of, you know, the Loire Valley. I mean, it looks so beautiful. I think it's going to be a fantastic, amazing four days touring the Loire. Let's go and have a look at all of those beautiful vineyards. So I had a hint at it this morning at the hotel, but the vineyard landscapes here are absolutely beautiful. You can see the village, right, the village of Sancerre behind me where I was this morning. And then here you got a view of the Loire Valley River. It's absolutely covered in mainly Sauvignon Blanc grapes here. I mean, if you come here to Sancerre, just go up on the hills and have a look at the, the vineyards uh, areas. It's just superb. The, the Loire Valley is just down there as well. You can probably see it. I'll show you a little bit more. Now here I'm on a special spot that is particularly 
uh, characteristic of the type of soil that they have here in Sancerre that is literally covered in this very special rare silex stone. It's a very hard stone and that's what gives the Sauvignon Blancs here from Sancerre their uniqueness, their unique minerality in the expression of the wine. This stone you don't find anywhere else or very often in the world of wine, especially in the world of Sauvignon Blanc wine. You don't find this very often in New Zealand, if at all. You don't find it in California, if at all. Here in Sancerre, vineyards are literally covered in silex stones and yeah and that's what gives the Sauvignon Blancs from Sancerre here from the Loire Valley their uniqueness and their refinement the finesse in the expressions you can imagine how hard it is to work on those vineyards let's have a quick look at it You see can you see how much stone there is in those vineyards like it's literally virtually completely completely covered in silex stones and we're on a hill as well so meaning that the rain drains quite quite well so I mean rare 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 vineyard site right here back in my office with my glasses of wine as I'm editing this video and putting together all of the content that I brought back from the Loire. Now, sorry I am interrupting this vlog style video because I know a lot of you are going to be tempted to leave the video in a couple of minutes, but I think it's actually when and where it starts getting really interesting and deep into the wine. What follows is the real story of Sauvignon Blanc's birthplace, deeply rooted in the heart of France. That very story that you are about to see, nobody has ever told it to you, at least not in video in that format. There are wine courses out there on YouTube, masterclasses and so on about Sauvignon Blanc, but none is going as deep as you are going to witness right now. We're going to be talking about the descendants of the people that have made it Sauvignon Blanc what it is in Sancerre for 500 years or more. Just to give you a little more context, uh, context in depth to what you're going to be watching, I'm realizing as I'm putting together this video that this is going to end up being a very long extensive video. So I'm going to split it into three episode series as I go down the Loire River and explore the different wines that they make there. One of the reasons this takes a little while is that I brought back for you some interviews of local wine growers because I think this is the best way to really get to understand understand a place and a wine, to hear firsthand from the local people who actually live with the wine, live for making the wine, hear from them directly. I know interviews can feel a little boring to watch, but I think if you're patient enough to actually hear and pay attention to what these people are saying, it's absolutely fascinating because they share their history going back centuries and centuries as they share in-depth views about their wine, how they taste, what food they like to pair it with. And here in Sancerre in particular, it's absolutely fascinating to hear the story of the very humble beginnings of the wineries there. So I met with arguably two of the most prominent producers in Sancerre, the Melo and the Bourgeois, and I'm very grateful they gave us their time to film those fascinating interviews so stick around to hear what they have to say if only for anything just as a respect for them but let's go and get back to the video right now I've shown you what is so special about the terroir of Sancerre, but I want to understand a little bit more about 
Where does the Sauvignon Blanc come from and what makes it so special here in the Upper Loire Valley? So I am here with uh, Catherine Corbeau Mello, uh, who runs the Joseph Mello uh, property and estate here, which is one of the staples, one of the very famous and important wine producers, one of the leading wine producers here in Sancerre. Um, to understand a bit better and she's going to tell us more about the history of Sancerre and a bit more about her work and we're going to cover some of the different wines that are made from Sauvignon Blanc here. Uh, Catherine is not very comfortable in English so we're going to switch back to French and uh, we're going to switch back to some subtitles. Uh, thank you Catherine for welcoming me. Merci beaucoup de m'accueillir ici. Essayez de me faire comprendre un petit peu la, la, la passion et l'héritage que vous transportez, que vous portez euh, ici dans votre famille chez, chez, chez Joseph Mello. Mais d'abord, je voudrais comprendre, euh, essayer de mieux sentir euh, ses origines euh, du, du Sauvignon Blanc et à quel point ben, le Sauvignon Blanc a été sélectionné dans, Pourquoi, dans cette, ouais. dans cette région et quelle peut, peut être l'histoire un petit peu de, du Sauvignon Blanc ici avant, avant son expansion mondiale dans le reste du monde et son succès mondial que finalement euh, vos, vos ancêtres ont, ont porté. Voilà, merci beaucoup. Eh bien, bonjour à tous. Et alors, je vais justement commencer l'histoire du Sauvignon par le Quincy, parce qu'on dit qu'en fait, c'est à Quincy qui est le berceau du Sauvignon, puisque euh, autrefois, on en retrouve déjà dans les écrits du temps de Charles VII, du temps de l'abbaye de Beauvoir, et même ce seraient les femmes de l'abbaye de Beauvoir qui auraient transporté justement les, les cèpes de Sauvignon quand il y a eu un petit peu des déplacements en fait des, des différents peuples avec les différentes guerres. Et donc, c'est ce que disent un petit peu l'histoire. C'est à Quincy. Quincy, c'est à une heure de route un petit peu de Sancerre. Euh, on est plutôt sur des terroirs en fait de sable, alors qu'à Sancerre, vous avez pu voir, il y a beaucoup de relief. Donc on a des terroirs plutôt bien marqués en fait par des terroirs régio-calcaires, des terroirs très riches en silex ou encore aussi des, des, des caillotes. Et donc c'est vrai qu'on euh, dit que c'est notre région qu'il y a eu les premiers plans de Sauvignon. C'est l'histoire qui le dit. La famille de Joseph Mello, en fait notre famille remonte en 1513, puisqu'on retrouve un ancêtre qui s'appelait Pierre-Étienne Mello d'ailleurs, qui a donné euh, mm -hmm. d'où le nom d'une cuvée comme ça. Il y a toujours eu un Mello visiblement qui était euh, vigneron euh, sur Sancerre, dont un qui s'est illustré auprès de Louis XIV en étant conseiller du roi. César Mello, en 1694, mm. euh, et après bon, on va passer un peu les siècles, et euh, au siècle dernier, on avait nos, enfin, nos arrière arrière grands pères étaient très dynamiques, puisqu'on fait partie des premiers à aller euh, porter euh, les bouts, enfin, faire connaître les vins à la capitale, comme on disait à l'époque, mm. <rire> à faire les foires, à faire aussi de l'exportation, et puis bon, bah, comme dans toutes les familles, à un moment donné, il y a une petite séparation, et ce qui fait que maintenant, effectivement, on a deux branches, et nous, la branche de Joseph Mello a voulu aussi euh, développer un vignoble dans chacune des appellations voisines puisque euh, c'était mon mari Alexandre qui est décédé en 2005 qui se disait on a du beau Sauvignon il était très curieux de, de, de pouvoir cultiver ce Sauvignon ces autres appellations et de, et de voir l'évolution et de, de pouvoir euh, travailler ces terroirs parce que c'est ouais. tout dans le terroir hein. on a les mêmes plans mais on a le terroir l'exposition aussi euh, qui va nous donner cette palette euh, aromatique de vin et cette différence entre un Quincy, un Pouilly et même à Sancerre puisqu'on a quand même des expositions euh, ouais. différentes selon que vous êtes ouais, sud-sud-est, ouais. sud sud-ouest. Euh... Vous êtes euh, un des producteurs si, si on veut voyager euh, vous pouvez. autour de ce... De ce Je crois qu'on peut de, vous proposer de, de, de toutes, les, toutes les facettes. <rire> voilà. Here I am in a 12th century uh, underground cellar where they age and mature uh, some of the top quality wines here at Joseph Mello. Uh, so I think we are at the end of the fermentation uh, process uh, here. So 12th century underground, uh, I think we're quite a few meters underground here. So you can see also, you can feel how traditional uh, the winemaking or part of the winemaking process is here in Sancerre and at Joseph Melo in particular. I mean, they've been making wine in this very underground cellar for 800 years or so. I mean, it's just unbelievable. It's absolutely beautiful as well. And it smells a little bit 
oaky, um, a little bit, yeah, like typical of those underground cellars. So the atmosphere is just very, very, very special. I am here with Jean-Marie Bourgeois, which has inherited this long, long history of winemaking tradition. Here is one of the most famous producers here in Sancerre. So I've come here to understand and share with you guys well, all the know-how, all the everything that this uh, man he, right here has learned about Sauvignon Blanc, about his terroir of Sancerre. I'm so excited to, to meet and hear from this man. Uh, he doesn't speak uh, English, so we're going to have to switch into French, but uh, you can follow along with the subtitles right here and turn them on on YouTube if they're not on. And uh, yeah, let's jump right into it. So Jean-Marie, bonjour. Uh, bonjour. Miguel. Thank you very much for, for, for having us. C'est un vrai plaisir pour moi de vous rencontrer également, de pouvoir perpétuer notre histoire, qu'elle soit racontée mmh. et la garder. Donc vous me parliez un petit peu des, bah, des origines de, de, votre, de votre domaine, des origines humbles. Oui, euh, nous sommes vignerons de père en fils depuis plus de dix générations. Et moi, je suis la neuvième officielle. Et puis, euh, à l'origine, quand je suis venu travailler dans le domaine en 1956, on avait un cheval. On avait une vache pour avoir du lait, des chèvres, pour avoir du fromage. On vivait un peu en Antarctique, on était obligé de faire du foin pour nourrir les animaux. Euh, on vendait le fromage de chèvre, le crottin de chavignol, ce qui servait à nourrir la famille. Et le vin, ça servait surtout pour acheter un petit lopin de terre, pour acheter un cheval. Ça servait pour euh, euh, faire grandir l'exploitation. Mmh. Mais la vie se faisait autour de la chèvre pour la nourriture. Après la guerre, il y a eu de, beaucoup de tourisme qui s'est développé, surtout Paris, qui est venu jusqu'à Chavignol. Chavignol qui a toujours eu la réputation d'être un très beau village avec son fromage de chèvre. Le touriste venait déguster le vin et manger un peu de fromage de chèvre. Et ça, c'est vraiment la, la meilleure alliance. Le fromage de chèvre où les chèvres venaient paître dans la côte des Mondanais mm -hmm. et aussi avec un verre de vin des Mondanais. Le, le vin a commencé à prendre une importance plus importante. Oui, dans... ça, ça a démarré dans les années entre 50 et 60. Et là, j'ai eu, euh, on a eu le tourisme qui s'est développé, donc on a un petit peu réduit la chèvre, qui n'est pas très compatible avec les, la mise en bouteille et tout. Et puis j'ai eu la chance que ma sœur s'est mariée avec un Parisien qui avait de bonnes relations et on a commencé à vendre dans les restaurants parisiens, dans les brasseries. Et on allait toutes les semaines livrer notre vin dans les brasseries. On s'est fait connaître comme ça. Et comme les étrangers viennent beaucoup à Paris, ils ont dégusté nos vins et on a commencé à vendre à l'exportation parce qu'ils trouvaient notre vin dans les restaurants parisiens. Mmh. Ça a été vraiment une, une carte de visite extraordinaire. Ça a été vraiment une publicité Extraordinaire. Première fois qu'on a vendu aux Américains, mm -hmm. ils avaient dégusté notre vin dans un restaurant. Parce que nous sommes à deux... 200 km. 200 km pour ouais. deux, heures, deux heures de route. Oui, deux heures de deux route, route. c'est facile. Et puis, il y a quand même, il y a beaucoup de paysages à plat. Et là, on tombe vraiment dans les collines du Sancerrois et particulièrement de Chavignol, puisque Chavignol, tout, tout le vignoble est en coteau. C'est toujours très floral, ce nez de Sauvignon qui apparaît bien mais qui n'est pas violent. On n'aime pas les vins dans le Sauvignon et violent parce que sinon, euh, quand il est violent, souvent ça tombe derrière et il ne reste plus grand chose. Il faut qu'il qu vienne à vous et qu'il grandisse au contraire dans le vin. Après, en bouche, on a beaucoup d'agrumes, ce qui est le caractère du Sauvignon, euh, légèrement acidulé, les citronné légèrement. On a aussi... Euh, on aime bien avoir les fruits de, de, qu'il y avait dans les vignes, on a un petit peu la pêche, ouais. la petite pêche des vignes. Mais ce qu'on a derrière, après l'avoir bu, on a 
ici on ressent un petit côté iodé salin, mm -hmm. c'est vraiment le caractère du quai méridien. Et ça, ça se marie merveilleusement bien, bien sûr, avec des très bons poissons, euh, cuisinés pas trop cuits, pour que ce puisse soit un très bon mariage, et puis aussi les fromages de chèvre. Euh, Est-ce que vous avez une vision euh, résumée de, des Sauvignons Blancs du Monde et de la position de, de, de votre Sauvignon, de, de Sancerre euh, en particulier. dans le monde en particulier Oui. En... La première fois que je suis allé aux États-Unis, dans, en Californie, ça devait être en 1986 ou 7. Et j'avais trouvé que les vins californiens, contrairement à ce qu'on m'avait dit en France, ils étaient loin d'être dégueulasses. Ils étaient différents. Donc je me suis traîné un petit peu partout dans le monde. Et puis, j'ai trouvé un Sauvignon lors d'un salon à Londres d'ailleurs, qui me plaisait beaucoup, qui était loin d'être équivalent à Sancerre, c'était la Nouvelle-Zélande. Ouais. Et en Nouvelle-Zélande, euh, franchement, je me suis dit, mais c'est incroyable, on peut faire quelque chose de... pas du Sancerre, mais un bon Sauvignon. So when you arrive in Sancerre, and it's a nice little tiny little rural village on top of a hill, beautiful village, it's nice to go for a walk around the village of Sancerre to get an idea of, you know, the village and a bit of the history and, you know, find your way around. But then there's a place that is really, I've been told, is really nice to start understanding what is Sancerre all about. And I've been told it's a great place. I'm going to meet uh, the director, so she's going to explain us what uh, is inside this museum and why, what is the spirit behind the creation of this museum that is run, I think, by the winemakers in the city of Sancerre here. I'm going to go and, uh, you know, check out what's inside this museum and whether it's worth it uh, or not. Let's go. is actually an interactive museum so it's a very modern museum it's not a dusty museum and annoying museum it's really fun um, the idea is to uh, make the link create a link between the, um, the, the city of Sancerre when you arrive in, in, in Sancerre and uh, the vineyards and the, the winemakers so uh, understand uh, all the well actually basically everything about uh, about this appellation uh, what are the grape varieties uh, what are the wine growers doing um, and this is uh, happening thanks to uh, well different uh, interactive um, activities you can find at this museum such as uh, a 4D movie or an interactive map for instance it's also open to everybody uh, it's open to wine lovers but it's also open to children a visit is ending with of course a tasting of, uh, of uh, Sancerre um, and there's also a, a shop a souvenir shop to to uh, find something nice to uh, to bring back home Great, wonderful, yeah. Yeah, so essentially this is like one hour long uh, little tour. It's very nice, very simple to understand and there's this great 4D cinema movie uh, that sort of shakes you around a little bit and but presents the winemaking process uh, here in Sancerre but it, which is valid in other places as well. So in five minutes you get around the winemaking process and you get this great map of Sancerre that moves around as well. Uh, and that explains you the different sub-areas. So it's just essentially a great, great way to find your way around and you know, understand where you've landed here in Sancerre and what's special, the geography and the different hills, the different, you know, the position of the village around the area. I mean, yeah, very, 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 very well done. I've actually traveled in many, many wine regions around the world and I don't think I've seen that many that have such a place to sort of understand everything the grape varieties, the styles of wine before you actually go and visit the winery. So, well done, Rosalie. Thank you. And thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you very much.
Oh yeah, the Sancerre wine by Joseph Melo. This one right here smells and tastes absolutely beautiful. But that was it for me today. In about a week or so with the next episode of my trip in the Loire, I'm going to take you down the Loire River, a step downwards towards the ocean to Vouvray and Bourgueil, the lands where they grow the Chenin Blanc, the white grape, and the Cabernet Franc, the red grape, where some of the best wines made from those grapes are made in France, of course, but also in the world. It should be absolutely fascinating also, so make sure to stay tuned to the channel for that. Also, if you've enjoyed this video, I suppose if you watched this far, maybe you did enjoy, please share it with your wine-loving fellow wine-loving friends who might be interested in learning more about this. And I will see you soon in the wonderful world of wine. See you soon. Cheers. Bye-bye. Au revoir.